yesterday's session who knows what yes. obstructive obstructive and what are the other sort of symptoms uh prostate uh, prostatic symptoms are they are uh, prostate patients or the patients having enlargement of prostate they have low urinary tract symptoms but actually the symptoms of the low urinary tract they are divided into two broad categories there is no one from the yesterday session no one in the class repeat the urge and forging who is this adil sorry adil adil shamri adil shamri adil do you remember what are the two main type of symptoms uh, storage yes what are the storage symptoms uh, the bladder is unable to keep the urine within it the problem uh, bladder is a storage uh, bag actually uh, the urine collects there and then patients uh, uh, get rid of it when the circumstances are suitable for him but if the patient there is problem in the storage patient have storage symptoms or we call them irritative symptoms and what are the other, other type of symptoms they are obstructive ba symptoms ba basing the urine yes micturition problem uh, obstructive symptoms or the Uh, the symptoms that are secondary to voiding problem okay so generally speaking alhamdulillah at least one student was from the yesterday session so we have generally two type of symptoms storage symptoms irritative symptoms or the voiding uh, symptoms storage symptoms you can uh, yourself imagine what are these patient is unable to hold the urine in his bladder so he will have frequency of urine as soon as small amount enters into the bladder he will rush to the washroom there is frequency there is urgency there is urge incontinence and dysuria also and the other spectrum of the uh, same uh, problem is voiding symptoms symptoms which are secondary to outflow obstruction patient is unable to pass urine and uh, there is problem in passing urine so we have symptoms of hesitancy patient goes to the washroom with severe urge but then he is unable to pass it he is hesitating to pass the urine or there is intermittency between the passage of the urine or he passes the urine with force straining or there is dribbling he uh, there is uh, straining uh, he is straining for micturition and then with severe strain some drops come out or if the urine is passed it is of weak strain the stream is not strong so all of these symptoms hesitancy uh, core stream or weak stream straining uh, straining on micturition intermittency and dribbling they all are called the voiding or the obstructive symptoms generally lower urinary tract symptoms are a broad is a broad category and a lot of conditions they present with these symptoms but generally speaking the most common cause in the males is benign prostatic hyperplasia or benign prostatic obstruction and the most common cause in the females is urinary tract infection these are the uh, these highlighted ones are the most common causes in the males and the females uh, other causes can also contribute to the symptoms like uh, uh, if there is a uh, dysfunctional bladder a bladder secondary to neurogenic uh, uh, dysfunction or patient is having the choose or over activity or under activity or there is some uh, other problem like structure or stones or infections prostatitis or there is a bladder tumor or malignancy all of these they have some uh, part of the lower urinary tract symptoms as their presentation but the most common cause of lower urinary tract symptoms in males is bph uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia and in females it is uti urinary tract infection I'll uh, go on to a BPH. BPH is benign prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, what is prostate gland? Anyone can tell what is prostate gland? Uh, is... Below the bladder. Okay. At the neck of the bladder it is situated. What is it? What it secretes? Uh, it, uh... Or what, it, uh, what is its action? What it does? it converts testosterone into dihydroxytestosterone which is the more active form of testosterone okay it is actually a, a glandular muscular tissue 
Um, most of the uh, part of it is glandular and about uh, one third is uh, stroma, the supporting fibromuscular stroma. The usual size that we get on ultrasound, the maximum size you can say, maximum size is up to 18 to 20 uh, 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 milligram. And it produces an enzyme, prostate specific antigen, which we can find uh, in the blood uh, of uh, patients with hypertrophy or malignancies. Uh, patients having any problem in the prostate, PSA level is rise uh, on a rise. But level of the PSA tells us that is it a benign in, uh, uh, enlargement or is it malignant enlargement? Level is too high in malignant, but it is mildly high in cases of benign uh, enlargements. And what is its action? It's, it converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which is the most uh, active form of the testosterone. And second is, it is responsible for the fluid component of the semen. The uh, semen that is coming from uh, uh, back, it is added up with some fluid part because of the action of a prostate, uh, uh, prostate gland. The gland secretes secretions there, and it increases the liquid quantity of it. Okay. Uh, if we speak anatomically, uh, you know that bladder, uh, sorry, the prostate is present at the uh, neck of the bladder and we have divided it into many zones. There is a central zone, transitional zone and the peripheral zone. And there are different, uh, uh, um, uh, you can say arrangement of the cells inside. Uh, broadly speaking, <clears throat> out of these zones, the transitional zone is responsible for what? What uh, causes the, uh, what condition can arise if there is enlargement of the transitional zone? Obstruction. <clears throat> and? Because the, at uh, the is, urethra. Urethra is passing through it, so it will cause a a urethral obstruction. But usually the benign problems, they arise in the transitional zone. And the malignant problems, they arise in the peripheral zone. Okay. Uh, to uh, make it uh, easy for you, the transitional zones are associated or the enlargement of the transition, uh, transitional zone are associated with BPH and the enlargements of the peripheral zones, they are usually associated with prostatic malignancies. Okay, arterial supply comes from uh, prostatic artery, which is a branch of the inferior vesicle artery, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery. And as it has the arterial supply, the same are the... Uh, Venous, uh, the same are the venous drainage and the lymphatic drainage also. Uh, venous drainage is through the prostatic venous plexus and it drains into the internal iliac nodes, uh, internal iliac veins. Some of the uh, venous drainage, it enters into the inter, uh, internal vertebral venous plexus that is uh, along the uh, vertebrae, uh, along, along the body of it anteriorly. Um, Sympathetic uh, nerve supply it receives is sympathetic, parasympathetic, and sensory. And usually uh, these uh, nerves they come from the inferior hypogastric plexus. Okay. Uh, what are the conditions that cause prostate to become increased in size, or they cause prostatic growth? These are uh, more production of dihydrotestosterone, or testicular androgens, or uh, adrenal androgens. The more level of these hormones in the blood causes the prostate uh, gland to increase in its size and increase in the number of the cells. Hyperplasia, if we say what is hyperplasia, hyperplasia is increase in the number of the cells. So not only the gland uh, increases in hypertrophy, but it also increases in number. So there is number and uh, size, both are increased here. Mm, okay. Uh, BPH is actually hyper, uh, hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the epithelial and the stromal cells. And you can see when it increases, there is obstruction to the urethra, external compression of the urethra, and patient suffers the symptoms of urinary obstruction. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, uh, as we continue our discussion, uh, two things uh, should be uh, uh, very clear at the end of that for the discussion is, does the prostate size correlate with the symptoms? And uh, do we treat every patient with enlarged prostate? And how we treat every patient with uh, prostatic problem? Okay. Now, uh, symptoms are the same for BPH. We have the uh, storage symptoms or the voiding symptoms. Storage symptoms, uh, when the, uh, the um, prostate is of too much size and it is causing irritative uh, uh, symptoms in the bladder because of its protrusion inside the uh, bladder, which is causing 
um, compression of the bladder itself. So when it is compressing the bladder, there are storage symptoms. Start is with the voiding symptoms. Initially the voiding symptoms, and then there comes the storage symptoms. Uh, with the problem uh, that we have here, patient may develop uh, as a complication, bladder stones, UTI, decompensation, and a lot of other things. These all are secondary to the uh, failure to pass urine. The urine is a, a staying inside the bladder. The uh, urine is, there is urinary stasis and the stasis can cause a lot of complications. Uh, what is the, how we evaluate these patients? Uh, yesterday we discussed that uh, we cannot uh, examine the prostate directly. So we uh, usually do uh, uh, digital rectal examination. We do abdominal examination, we do external dentalia examination, and then we go for digital rectal examination. And we discussed how we can differentiate a prostatic hyperplasia from a hypertrophy from a prostatic malignancy. What, what are the differences between their presentation? Okay, uh, you can go through uh, uh, your brows. There is a text uh, a form of it. You can uh, see what are the differences between um, presentation of a malignancy on DRE and presentation of, of a benign prostatic hyperplasia or hypertrophy. Now, uh, other investigations that we can do here, they are urinalysis, cytology, uh, cd active protein can be checked, uh, PSA levels, ultrasound, uh, PVR, or ur urine flowmetry. They all help in some extent to know about uh, the, not only the uh, identify the problem that is there, the prostatic problem, as well as if there are uh, additional components like muscular instability or uh, uh, detrusor instability and other components, they are also ruled out by these investigations. Uh, you can see when we do the uh, ultrasound, uh, if the bladder is pushing, uh, is pushed by the increased prostate, we can see there is a, a doom formation within the bladder uh, 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 within the within the bladder in a full bladder, and we can identify the um, problem is uh, arising uh, from the prostate, and is it uh, arising from the transitional zone or the peripheral zone? That is also very clear. And uh, other signs of uh, malignancy and the benign thing can also be seen in the uh, ultrasound. PVR or the post void urine that is also very important uh, to identify in these patients because of the obstruction. Uh, when the, when the patient is uh, having a strong urge, he goes to the washroom, he passes some urine, and uh, then uh, when, when he is uh, able to pass enough urine, he gets up. And then we say the patient to uh, get a, a, another scan. And in that scan, we check the post void urine. Urine after he has passed the, uh, sorry, uh, amount of urine in the bladder after he has passed the urine as per his desire. So uh, if the P uh, PVR is uh, more than 100, usually it is about 50 to 100. If it is more than 100, it is uh, taken as significant. More than 200 is very significant. And then uh, we can go for uroflowmetry to check uh, what is the urine flow throughout the, 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 the time. Is it a normal stream or is it intermittent or is it a poor stream? You can identify it with the urine flowmetry. Now come on to the uh, treatment part. Uh, treatment. In patients with very mild symptoms, uh, irritative symptoms, but uh, the obstructive symptoms are mild, we can offer watchful waiting uh, to the patient. We can say him to avoid uh, increased intake at the night time uh, to uh, avoid the nighttime discomfort. Um, and or we, we uh, uh, advise him some other behavioral modification uh, things. And uh, we don't start medication unless until the patient is having some uh, symptoms, which we say in the IPSS range. You remember what is IPSS? International Prostate Scoring uh, uh, Symptoms. Our symptom scoring. Do you remember we discussed IPSS scoring yesterday? From 1 to 35. Yes, 0 yes. to 35. Zero yeah. to from one to seven, it's mild. From seven to eighty, it's uh, moderate. Eighty over over twenty, yes, over twenty, it's uh, severe. Okay, so the patients who are having mild symptoms, zero to seven, we offer them watchful waiting. We just uh, advise them behavioral modification, lifestyle modification, and uh, we just observe them uh, time to time. 
uh, it is not just a watchful waiting. You have to advise them lifestyle modification to decrease uh, intake and to avoid caffeine and other uh, things that are uh, having diuretic element. So you have to advise them about these modifications, but we don't start medications. Patients having IPSS score eight to 19, these patients, they require uh, medical treatment. And uh, in the medical therapy, we have two broad categories, alpha blockers and 5-alpha uh, reductase, uh, reductase inhibitors. Uh, alpha blockers uh, actually cause relaxation of the muscles that, uh, uh, that let the bladder to pass the urine. It's, uh, uh, at the, uh, uh, they are acting actually at the level of the bladder sphincter which is uh, it, because of irritation, which becomes tightened and doesn't let the urine to pass. So it re relaxes the muscles there and it causes uh, pa uh, patients to get rid of the obstructive symptoms. So alpha reduct uh, the, sorry, alpha blockers can be selective alpha 1, uh, 1A blockers or they can be non-selective blockers. Uh, usually, um, we use uh, the important are these long acting alpha one blockers. They are the very selective and uh, these uh, subtype specific subtype of that uh, receptor stem solution. These two are the most uh, uh, you can say beneficial in controlling the symptoms. But uh, uh, these alpha blockers they have their complications because they are. Uh, acting systemically and they have systemic side effects also. Second, they don't affect the growth of the uh, prostate itself. They are just causing symptoms by relaxing the smooth muscle. Okay, so uh, you have to give them with care in uh, a specific subtype of patients. Uh, okay, these are the uh, uh, specific subtypes which we use uh, usually, alfuzacin or temsilucin. Now, uh, the Side effects can be orthostatic hypotension, syncope, dizziness, tiredness, peripheral edema, headache. Uh, these all can uh, occur in these patients. So you have to be very careful, especially uh, uh, when the patients uh, go to the washroom at the night time. Uh, they may uh, develop some, uh, they may uh, uh, fall and they may have some uh, serious injuries too. So you have to be very careful and you have to inform the patient about these symptoms very clearly. The second group of uh, uh, medic medications that we use, they are the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. Uh, these are uh, uh, finasteride and dutasteride, and they are very beneficial as they uh, not only uh, relieve the symptoms, but uh, with the passage of time, they also uh, reduce the size of the uh, gland also as they reduce the DHT level and with, with the decrease in the DHT level and its effect on the um, prostatic gland itself, it causes reduction in the uh, cell size um, uh, as such. Uh, there is a resultant decrease in the total gland volume about 20 to 30 percent and uh, its uh, regression is maximum at uh, six months. So uh, when we do uh, uh, the uh, PSA level in these patients, because of the uh, uh, changes just causing inside PSA level is usually increased in patients who are alpha reductase, um, who are on alpha reductase. So you have to be very careful while you are doing PSA levels, you have to ask uh, from the patient, are you taking five alpha reductase or not? Because the PSA levels, they are high because of this uh, drug also. Side effects can be ejaculatory dysfunction or decreased libido or uh, gynecomasia, but uh, as compared to uh, alpha blockers, uh, uh, it is safer. So we usually, uh, what we do as they both have uh, totally different action, what we use, we usually give them in combination and combination therapy is best uh, for the patients in controlling the uh, symptoms. Uh, surgical management uh, is indicated if the patient's bladder size, uh, sorry, prostate size is too much, more than 80 to 100 uh, gram, or uh, if there, uh, there is uh, recurrent uh, uh, attacks of infection or urinary retention, uh, if the patient is uh, suffering from renal insufficiency because of back pressure or there are bladder calcula developing inside, uh, gross hematuria or failure of the medical therapy. So we go for a surgery and the surgery we plan is of uh, two types. Uh, we can go for an open surgery or we can go for a minimally invasive transurethral uh, resection surgery. Uh, open surgery, we give a suprapubic incision. We go inside, we uh, uh, approach that area and we take the uh, prostate uh, from the uh, from uh, uh, from that area 
with uh, observing everything. But uh, what we are doing in TURP or the transurethral approach, we approach through the urethra by passing a urethroscope uh, directly. And then when we reach the region of obstruction, we start resecting the prostate. And both of these, they have their indications in uh, 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 glands, which are symptomatic, but up to 80, uh, uh, up to 80 milligram, uh, 80, 80 gram, uh, 80 to 100. We use um, uh, TURP because it can be managed easily. But if the gland size is more than 100 and uh, 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 obviously the residual urine volume is too high, we have to go for uh, open approach because at that uh, uh, big size, there are chances of perforation. There are chances of uh, having a more complications with TURP. So TURP is uh, when we have a gland size of up, uh, up to eight, uh, 80 or below 100, but more than 100, we usually prefer an open approach. So this is all about uh, uh, BPH and uh, the lower urinary tract symptoms. Uh, it's uh, finished. Any question about it? Sleeping beauties, get up. Any question? No, I like clear, doctor. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, we'll start uh, the next lecture.